My check. A show geared to hear the voice of young people in New York City. Our mission is to inform of major events, protests, and political agendas that matter to us the most. My name is Eric Pineda, and I am your host of this episode of My Check. Today we are here to discuss a very relevant and sensitive topic. Resolution TC 168-13. The law that strips all Haitian descent the individuals of the citizenship and even Dominicans of Haitian descent in Dominican Republic. Not to start, it's a se hace. If you're produced by fellow Dominican, exposing the issue if it were to take place here in the United States. Dominicano soy, de mis raíces yo no voy a olvidarme. Soy de una loma y lo llevo en la sangre. Monte Cristeño, por la gracia de Dios, Dominicano soy. De mis raíces yo no voy a olvidarme. Soy de una raza tan unida y tan grande. Excuse me, ma'am. Were you born in this country? Yes. What were your grandparents? Uh, no, they came here in the 30s from Poland. Where I'm was? sorry. The Supreme Court just ruled that you're no longer your citizen. You'll be eligible to apply for residency. You no longer have the right to vote, and you will also have to pay higher tuition as a foreigner. Luckily, you're not a lawyer yet because you will also lose your right to practice law. Well, that doesn't even make any sense. I was born in this country. I, I have U.S. citizenship. Well, ma'am, you have a chance to apply for a Polish passport. I don't even speak Polish. Just be thankful we're not deporting you. Yes? We're looking for Gerald. He's busy right now. What's this about? His name came up on the list, so we're here to inform him that his passport is no longer valid. What? What do you mean by that? What's going on here? Sir, are you Gerald? Yeah? I'm here to inform you that you're no longer an American citizen. And your passport what? is no longer valid. My family came here from Italy three generations ago. Sir, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> you're no longer an American citizen. Jesus. Excuse me, sir. Are you Mr. Duarte? Yes. Are you an American? Who cares? Yeah. Are you sure you're an American? Yeah. Can you pronounce this word for us, please? Parsley? What? This is some kind of joke? Sounds like you have a little bit of an accent. Are your grandparents American? Where are they from? The Dominican Republic. No. I'm sorry. You're not a longer US citizen. But the Dominican Republic is doing the same thing to children, grandchildren, and even great-grandchildren of Haitians. The decision of the Constitutional Tribunal was stripped citizenship from 200,000 of its own citizens. So this shouldn't be anything new to you. I'm sorry. What? Que lo que dice? Que no somos americanos. You're watching the Youth Channel. Be sure to stay updated on our social media pages. To find out more about the Youth Channel, check out our YouTube page where we upload all of your favorite and segments. And for the most part, in definitely a lot of healing and definitely a lot of creative. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter. Add us on Facebook for more updates and news and see behind-the-scenes footage of our productions on the Youth Channel's Instagram page. As we just saw, this was a very straightforward video. It was very realistic and shocking. I know that personally, when I saw it, I was kind of wowed by the actions that had been taken in my island, my people. It's my government doing this. It was just, to me, it was just, I don't, I don't even know how to react to it. It was very, it just touched me. Um, we saw how it would impact our community here in the U.S. if it were to take place. A significant amount of our population will be gone. Keep in mind that 92% of those impacted on the island are Dominicans of Haitian descent. In September of 2013, so this recent past September, the Dominican Constitutional Tribunal ruled to strip citizenship from over 200,000 of its own citizens. Here, here with us today, we have Javiela and Yanilda 
who are part of a group called We Are All Dominicans, a group of university students and young community who have joined forces with various communities, including scholars and activists. Azor Hafe, who is part of the Dominicanos as Federation in New York City, a coalition of Dominicans, serving organizations, and individuals who are against TC 168-13. Both groups are working to end, as I like to call it, the social genocide of Haitian descent. And what I mean by that is that, um, so currently I'm studying World War II and World War I in my global class, and we're talking a lot about the, the Holocaust. And I, I found the connection between the two. I was thinking to myself, wow, this is just like the Holocaust all over again. It's just without, without the exception that we're not killing Haitians, but we just want to banish them, just disappear them. You know, like, it's, it's not right. So I found the connection between the two. I was like, wow, it's just, it's just like the Holocaust. So the way I like to refer to it as, is um, the social genocide of, of um, Haitian descent people. All right, so I'm going, to be, I'm going to be interviewing them about the ground and the effects taking place. I want to let all of them introduce themselves. So how about let's start with you, Janelle. Can you tell me a little bit more about yourself and the role that you play in We Are Dominicans? Sure, uh, my name is Javiela Evangelista. Um, I'm a recent uh, member of We Are All Dominican. I joined um, during a panel a few months ago, and I've been active in trying to spread the word on the subway, spreading out informational sheets. Um, most recently, on February 27th, we were part of a vigil on Dominican independence to make it clear that this isn't the type of independence that we want to celebrate. Um, so I'm excited to be here. All right, it's a pleasure having you here as well. So let's keep going on with Yonelda, you know, the same. Sure. Um, first, thanks to you. Thanks, Eric, uh, and the folks at Mike Check and MNN for having us uh, for having us here to talk about our work. Uh, my name is Daniela Gonzalez. I'm um, a PhD student, um, and like many of us uh, involved in this group, we're, we're students, we're activists, we're educators, and artists uh, that are very concerned about this issue and the impact that it's having on uh, on people who are ultimately just like us. Uh, I'm an immigrant to the United States. I came to, the, to New York when I was a, a, a little kid. Um, and, and many people in our group are also the children of immigrants. So they are people that were born here, just as you know, Dominicans of Haitian descent were born in the Dominican Republic. And so for us, we, there's a lot of um, relationship between our experience as immigrants and the children of immigrants here, and those uh, Haitian immigrants and their children who are Dominicans of Haitian descent are experiencing in, in the DR. So that's why we've all taken up mobilizing around this cause. No, definitely. And I was doing some research and I was looking at the fact that we had a big wave of immigrants from the Dominican Republic to um, the United States during the 60s and the late um, 80s after three years' death. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking to myself, wow, if this really happened here, like we just had the video, we will all be gone. I yeah. wouldn't be here. Like, my friends, all of us would be, and not even, not even during the 60s or 80s, going back to the first group who migrated here during the 30s. Um, these, people, these people came a long time ago here. And it just makes me think, wow, it would just, like, I wouldn't exist. This wouldn't exist. Yeah. What I'm doing today, what I'm trying to be somebody in life, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have the chance, you know, to express. It was just, I was just like, wow, it's, it's really shocking. So now as for you, Hafid, can you tell us a little more about yourself? And, well, you know, thank you. Uh, like, as Danilda said, thank you for having us uh, on your show. Uh, my name is Hafid Acosta. I was born and raised in the Dominican Republic. I am a filmmaker. Uh, I'm a graduate of City College, CUNY. I've been making films for the last 12, 12 years, 12 to 15 years. And uh, like Javiela, I am a recent uh, member of uh, Dominicano por Derecho, Real Dominican New York. Uh, I started this month, the beginning of the month, uh, because I, I knew about the ascendancy, but uh, through Facebook, through some friend of mine, there were some events, and I said, you know, this is something that I definitely would like to be a part of, and I can really uh, share my talents, how we can, um, you know, educate the community about what's going on in DR. Um, learning, uh, growing up in DR, I, I never knew about racism because of the way my family brought me up and the education. When I came here, that's when I learned uh, about, you know, injustices through the civil rights movement, you know, in the 60s and so forth. So this is very close to me and I'm totally against it. I'm, I'm very happy to be you know, a member and being able to, to help uh, on the group. I also did uh, some time with the Mirabal System Community Center as a community activist uh, since, two th since 2010. So that's why I like to get involved in moves uh, like this, movement like this. All right, awesome. Don't go away, we'll be right back.
¿Qué onda, mami? Hola, mijo, ¿cómo te estás? ¿Y qué te hace aquí abajo sentada? Ay, aquí cogiendo un chin de sol. ¿Verdad? Con esta nieve que cayó. Ay, sí. Oiga, yo, yo tengo una preocupación porque estaba chequeando aquí en Facebook que, que hay una sentencia que pasaron allá en la República. Bueno, que, que está pasando por el Congreso ahora, el Tribunal Constitucional, la, la sentencia 168-13. ¿Qué es? El Tribunal Constitucional pasó, eh, eh, intru, introdució una sentencia, la 168-13, que realmente le arrebata la, la nacionalidad a todo dominicano de ascendencia haitiana. Ah, sí, sí, van a deportar todo eso haitiano ya. Mami, ¿cómo, cómo te puede decir eso? Estamos hablando de, 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 de miles de personas que van a ser afectadas, niños, jóvenes, familias, que han vivido todo su vida en la República Dominicana. Bueno, mi hijo, porque cambió la ley y ellos se tienen que ir, y ellos no son dominicanos. Pero que es el error, ellos tienen su documento y se lo están quitando, tienen su cédula, tienen todo y, y se, lo, se lo están arrebatando solamente porque tienen un apellido haitiano. Ay, mi hijo, se ve que no son dominicanos, son haitianos, mi hijo. Son dominicanos porque nacieron allá y se le entregaron sus documentos. Ahora de repente le están quitando los documentos. Yo no sé lo que usted tiene en contra de, de, de los negros, no sé por qué usted habla así. ¿Y usted, usted que tiene descendencia haitiana? Ah, yo no soy haitiana, no. Mírame bien que yo no tengo nada de prieto. Ay, pero usted me hace, me hace la historia de, 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 de su abuelo. ¿Qué, domini ah, ¿Qué dominicano es? Ah, eso es una cosa loca que tuvo ahí. Nosotros nunca hablamos de esa parte de la familia. ¿Pero ¿Y por qué no? ¿Cuál, ¿Cuál es la vergüenza? ¿Cuál es el miedo? Somos todos somos seres humanos. No se puede juzgar a una persona por su descendencia haitiana, por su color de la piel. Ahora, ¿usted sabía de, 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 de la masacre del 37? Pues, mal... Sí, hombre, lo que hizo Trujillo ahí para limpiar todos esos prietos de ese sitio. Mami, pero estamos hablando de 40 mil personas que fueron asesinadas solamente por su color de su piel y su, y, y su, y, y su descendencia. Eso, eso está mal, es una violación de los derechos humanos. Nos estamos viendo mal como dominicanos, como país. Sí, mi hijo, pero esa gente cambiaron la ley. ¿Qué puede uno hacer? Mami, lo que tenemos que hacer es atacar a, a, al Congreso, demandar al Congreso, demandar al presidente Danilo Medina de que cambie esa ley, que, que entre, que escriba una legislación nueva para que a esas personas, a esos dominicanos que están desanalizados ahora, se le entregue sus documentos, se le entregue sus documentos como debe ser. Toda persona ha sido del 29 hasta el 2010, se le tienen que entregar sus documentos. ¿Y cómo no hace eso? Intégrate a los grupos Dominicanos por Derechos, Nueva York, y Todos Somos Dominicanos, We're All Dominicans, New York. Firma la petición demandando a los oficiales electos dominicanos a que promulguen una resolución denunciando la sentencia del Tribunal Constitucional 1683. You're watching the Youth Channel. Be sure to stay updated on our social media pages. To find out more about the Youth Channel, check out our YouTube page where we upload all of your favorite and segments. And for the most part in definitely a lot of healing and definitely a lot of creativity. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter. Add us on Facebook for more updates and news. And see behind the scenes footage of our productions on the Youth Channel's Instagram page. And now we're back where we are Dominicans and Dominicanos for that issue. Alright, so to introduce the issue, I'm going to start with a very key question to expose this to everybody watching. So can you fill us in, in your own words of what TC 168 um, 13 is? and what are the effects that it has. So starting with the old dog. Oh, um, well, um, so TC-168 is a decision that was issued by the, um, so like the Supreme Court here in the US, you know, they often issue decisions like, like they have on gay marriage um, and, and, other, and other issues. This decision um, was issued by our Supreme Court in the Dominican Republic, the Constitutional Tribunal, and they were looking at a case of a young woman that was being denied her ID card, um, which is a, a national ID card in the Dominican Republic uh, allows you to engage in pretty much anything. Go to school, vote, um, hold down most, most jobs, uh, get married, and to register your children when they're born. Uh, so without this, um, you can't do any of that stuff. You can't. You can't really have a life. It's, so it's very much goes to the heart of what you were saying about social, a social genocide. Um, so this the, the court ruled that not only was this young woman not eligible for having Dominican citizenship, but that um, all all um, Dominicans 
people born in the island of Haitian parents were not eligible. Um, were not eligible for citizens. So it not only uh, took away citizenship from anybody who fit that category, but it did so going back to 1929. So that's, uh, that ends up by the numbers cited in the, the decision itself, that could end up being as many as 210,000 people um, who are immigrants of Haitian descent. Before this decision was issued, the Dominican Republic for about um, going back to, to the early to the mid 2000s was depriving um, Dominicans of Haitian descent of their documents so you couldn't get a birth certificate and you couldn't get your ID card um, so this is something that has a bit of a longer history but now the Supreme Court the, the Constitutional Tribunal is saying this is the law of the land um, and so that's basically in a nutshell what it's what it's doing it's depriving you of uh, the documents that you need to carry out basic life activities to, to progress like you were saying make a better life for yourself and your family all right and to elaborate a little bit a little bit on what you were saying too um, to me it's just it's very shocking because what we're pretty much telling the Haitian um, not the Haitian but because these are our own people I consider this my people um, uh, like we're we're stopping you from from having a life, from going to school, getting education, you know, from like you say, um, like basic daily things, you know, activities. Who knows if we have the next um, Benjamin Franklin or, you know, or the next um, Apple maker, or you know, something like that. You know, again, I, between among these people, and we're stopping them from really becoming who they want to be, because we're retaining them from going to school, from buying certain things. And to me, it's just, it's just like wow, like this is crazy that we're doing this, you know. So I think it's just, it's just. To me, it's just petty. Like it's just like wow, I don't, I don't, I don't finish to comprehend why I would be doing something like this, you know? Because I think to myself when I came here, um, I've had the chance to get free education. I've gotten scholarships. I've gotten so many opportunities. And as me in the island thinking like, wow, how about if I wouldn't have had those opportunities? How about if I was, you know, retrained from stuff like that? Where would I be today? What what would be my plans for the future? You know, I would have no plans at all. And this is what we're doing to them. We're taking away their future. And it's just something that I believe is not right as we all, you know, stand together here. You're watching the Youth Channel. Be sure to stay updated on our social media pages. To find out more about the Youth Channel, check out our YouTube page where we upload all of your favorite and segments. And for the most part. In definitely a lot of healing and definitely a lot of creep. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter. Add us on Facebook for more updates and news and see behind the scenes footage of our productions on the Youth Channel's Instagram page. So I would just add much of what Yanilda has described, a loss of the right to vote, to marry, to have access to health care, um, is a loss of human rights. And so all of us who have been organizing have been rallying around this loss of human rights, supported by the Inter-American uh, Court for Human Rights and CARICOM and many others who have spoken about this issue. Um, so it's highly concerning because we're talking about uh, rights that people should have, that they were uh, removed, that were revoked. Um, that is a great point, which brings me to my next question. A lot of advocates and people are against this law. They are calling it a racist act. Do you agree on that? So I want to hear everybody's opinion. Um, so. uh, basically, yeah, we, we look into that. I mean, we can't really say that it's a racist act, but when 92 percent of, of those that are being deprived of their documents are Haitians or Dominicans of Haitian descent. I also would like to add that there's a, some incidents where you have Dominicans that they work for the government. They have paid taxes, they have contributed to the, to, um, you know, to the country, and now they, they cannot you know, renew their documents when they were given their documents, when they were born, when they were get to get their cellular, the identity card. So whose fault is it? Is it is mainly the government? If why are you giving their documents and now you you creating this ruling to take them away from them? Definitely. And also, would like to add that uh, there's a, a community in Puerto Plata of mm -hmm. Germans and Jews that they are the same. They have dual citizenship. Nobody bothers them. So this is basically a you know a social political move. So you know basically they don't want these people to have rights to vote. Um, so that's what I have to say about that. Um, I would just add to, to what Hafe was saying is the, f the fact that the vast majority of people affected are of Haitian descent um, is what leads us to, to call this, us and many other advocates and observers, to call this a racist decision. 
Why do we say that? So if you actually read it, it doesn't it doesn't say Haitians are not citizens. Haitian the children of Haitians are not citizens. Um, what it does say is that if your parents are undocumented, um, you are not a you are not a citizen of the Dominican Republic, even if you're born there. That's what that's what the law actually says. Um, but if you look to the history of of the deprivation of the deprivation of these documents, what they often say is is um, if you go to a government official, what they'll say is mm, these last names sound Haitian. <laughs> Um, yes. And you know the vast majority of people that have come forward and, and said that they've had these experience of being denied their documents have been people of Haitian descent, mm -hmm. um, and so that's why even if the, the letter of the law itself is not uh, explicitly targeted at Haitians, it's very clear that the implementation has been, mm -hmm. and so that's why many of us. And of course, it goes back to a long history of tensions between the Dominican right. Republic and Haiti, um, and so that's why that's why you know in a nutshell we we try not to be simplistic about it but but I think most of us would consider this a racist uh, court decision. And I would add, although uh, migratory policies are somewhat different, there's been some conversation about confounding the two, the denationalization issue and the migratory issue, as a way of keeping people confused and unclear. I'd say that there are there's a historical issue of. Um, this problem of Dominicanization of the border, um, just a conversation about the passage of uh, Haitian people or people of Haitian descent into the Dominican Republic that has been extremely problematic and I would say racist. So even though this is a, a somewhat of a separate issue in terms of um, not being about migration but being about citizens who deserve their citizenship, I think the historical trajectory of the way the Dominican government has dealt with migratory policies, particularly related mm -hmm. to people of Haitian descent or Haitians, um, has been racist. Definitely. In my opinion, I feel as though it's definitely a racist, a racist act. Um, I feel like the law is self-speaking. Like half has said, um, we have pop a population of Jews, of Italian, and other, and other um, backgrounds in DR, and they're not being bothered. It's only, it's only Haitian descent. So it's very straightforward. To me, it's definitely way more than just a racist act. It's it's just it's, it's we're targeting where we want to get them, we want to banish, you know, banish Haitian and Haitian descent. And it's just it's not right. Um, which is why I know that um, a various um, organization here in the United States are working together, you know. And um, um, how do you feel that this act, this law, is um, affecting DR as a whole, as a as a country? How do you how do you feel about? That? But some, something Javiela mentioned is creating tension between the Dominican community and the Haitian community and Dominican Haitian community um, because in the country there has been a long uh, issue when it comes to race going back to the uh, dictator uh, Trujillo which wanted to clean out all the Haitians um, and for the people watching if you do research on the 1937 massacre where they, where they killed 40,000 Haitian because he so-called wanted to clean in other country, and it's kind of ironic, and it's it's it's, it's really bad because he he was of Haitian descent, but it's like you have to negate your your blackness or anything that's related, to, uh, you know, being Haitian. Um, I would also add that it, you know, one is we have to look at the personal impact, the impact that this is having on p individuals and families, and communities. Um, and the other thing that you mentioned is, you know, you asked why, how is this affecting the Dominican Republic as a country? Um, internationally, the Dominican Republic has become a pariah. You know, it's become very criticized um, by, by other countries, particularly in the Caribbean. Other countries in the Caribbean have really come out, spoken out very strongly about this racist law. They call it racist. They call it a, human, a violation of human rights. Um, and it's also been dealt with by the Caribbean community. It's been dealt with the Organization for uh, American States. It's been dealt by the United Nations. And in each of these forums, um, the, the consensus is that the Dominican Republic needs to guarantee citizenship uh, for all the people that are born on the island. Um, and so this is something that, you know, it's also leading, there are people who are proposing boycotts. So don't go to the Dominican Republic. Um, I think some of us may not, there's different is of opinion about whether or not we agree with that, but it's a reality that the Dominican government is going to have to deal with, that there's going to be some people saying, we're not going to have our events in the Dominican Republic, we're not going to vacation there, we're not going to buy Dominican products. Um, so if this is something that they're going to continue doing, they have to be ready for the backlash, um, which is similar to what occurred with uh, South Africa under apartheid. You know, a lot of um, the international community essentially turned its back economically on, on the country and that, that 
ultimately was one of the factors that led to its um, to the downfall of apartheid. So the Dominican government needs to watch its you know its actions on the international stage because it might suffer economically um, as a result. And I would also add to that um, part of what we're trying to express as the Dominican diaspora is um, hopefully the power behind our voices here as well. And we often see. Uh, trucks that come around when it's time for elections promoting different mm. uh, politicians and you know many of us vote in the elections in the Dominican Republic and we want to make it clear that as a diaspora we're concerned and we hope that the power of our voice um, politically is also heard. Definitely and I feel like um, it's going to like you know what was saying event, um, like ultimately it's going to backlash to us to our economy because I was thinking to myself when I was little um, every Every person building in my community was was Haitian, and I would always think, "Wow, like, mm. how come we're not doing this work?" What, you know, we always using the minority kind of to do it. We're leaving the dirty work, the harder work, to um to Haitians to do, just like here, just like here, Mexicans are being um you know like deprived and just kind of looked at as a minority as oh they could do all the hard work, you know, we could we could use them for the stuff that we don't you know that we don't need to stress our people about. So to me, it's kind of like wow, like. Um, we're gonna suffer from this because we we balance each other out. I feel like um, we need Haitians and Haitians need us. And instead of working together, what we're doing is just like just wild, like pushing to the side, just not even evaluating their rights, their human, you know. So it's it's definitely gonna affect us in major ways. I want to stand up for my people. I want to stand up for myself. And, you know, support, support their rights, you know, human basic rights. Imagine if, if they pass a law here where, you know, we have to go home because we're no longer citizens, we're all immigrants. The, the Constitutional Court is trying to say these people are not Dominican. You're watching the Youth Channel. Be sure to stay updated on our social media pages. To find out more about the Youth Channel, check out our YouTube page where we upload all of your favorite and investing segments. For the most part in definitely a lot of healing and definitely a lot of creative. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter. Add us on Facebook for more updates and news. And see behind the scenes footage of our productions on the Youth Channel's Instagram page.